Hey, thank you so much for joining me on this video today. My name is Emilio and today we're going to be talking specifically about the uh, switching over from a Windows to a Mac computer. What are the, some of the differences that you need to know about? We're going to be talking about that right now. So you've either just moved over from a Windows computer to a Mac or you're thinking about moving over and it's just a little bit scary because you're moving over from something that you may be very familiar with which is a Windows 10 or Windows 8 or Windows 7 uh, computer to something that is different. Uh, Mac OS is a little bit different to play around with. Things are in different orders, things are in different locations. Uh, so we're going to be focusing on that uh, on this video today. Uh, we're going to be looking at some of the differences, uh, my top differences anyway, that will hopefully show you a good comparison between say a Windows 10 environment compared to the latest Mac OS environment and where things are located. For me, I was using Windows for all of my life. I started off my career in technology on Windows computers. I studied about Windows and then I went to work and I was working with Windows computers and that was my thing. And then I got exposed to the Mac and I didn't like it because it was so different. I couldn't get a good understanding of how it functioned. But then over time, I started to love it. And now it is one of my favorite operating systems. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump onto my Mac. Now on my particular Mac, I'm running an operating system called Big Sur, but it doesn't really matter what OS of Mac you are running, what operating system you are running. You could be running a newer version or an older version. Uh, the differences are not going to be too different. So we're going to be doing it on Big Sur. If you're doing it on Big Sur, great, but it's not imperative that you're on that operating system. So we're going to jump over to my computer right now and we're going to go through my top differences between Windows and a Mac. Here we are logged into our Mac and we've also got a Windows 10 computer here connected. So uh, the version that I'm running right here is uh, Mac OS Big Sur, uh, which is the latest version as of this video anyway. Uh, if you're running a earlier version of Mac OS or even perhaps a later version, um, there's not going to be too much differences. So this video should still be very, very helpful to you. Now, the very first thing that you're going to see right here is uh, there's a few differences around the desktop and uh, sort of how things look and feel. Now, if you're familiar with um, a Windows computer, you've of course got your desktop right here and you've got your icons generally are gonna be on the left-hand side. Here on our Mac, you'll see that everything is actually on the right. So that's directly one difference that you'll find straight away is that everything is on the right. On Windows, you've got your Start menu. So right here, I click on the Start menu. You can access your applications, you can open up applications. And then as well as that, you've also got this taskbar down the bottom where you've got some icons in here. And then you've got over here, you've got some other shortcuts around your clock and around your audio settings, and you can add other stuff into here as well. So your Start menu, there's also this little search area, uh, but then your taskbar and this here. On the Mac, that of course doesn't exist. Let's just move this down. You don't have a start menu on the bottom left-hand corner on your Mac. Instead, you've got an Apple logo up the top left-hand corner. We select this, and this sort of gives me some options, um, but not necessarily access to my applications. I've got things like system preferences for some other options, and I can shut down and things are right up here and log out of this particular session from here as well. While on Windows, you've got the start menu to be able to log out and shut down your computer as well. On top of that, we don't have a taskbar. Let's move this to the top, but we've got this thing called the dock. All right, so this is the equivalent of the taskbar on a Mac computer. You'll see that as, my move, as I move my mouse over, it does this really cool effect. All of my applications sit in the finder, which we're gonna look at in just a little bit, but um, you can drag and drop all your applications into here uh, and actually open up your apps right from there. Uh, and then on the very top right hand corner, I've got access to the similar stuff that you had on the bottom right hand corner. On Windows, you've got your clock and you've got your audio and you've got your Wi-Fi connections and everything all located on the top. Probably familiar with what's called File Explorer. We open up File Explorer right from here, okay? And this is the place where you see your PC, you've got access to your C drive and you've got all of your folders you know, listed in here. 
On the left, you've got some quick access things to be able to access pictures, movies, and then from here, access to all of this other stuff and all of your other folders. So that is Windows Explorer. Uh, on the Mac, instead, you've got the Finder. So let's just minimize this. Uh, the Finder is almost the equivalent of your Windows Explorer. You access that by going into your dock and it's listed right down here. And very similar to how uh, Windows Explorer is sort of structured, you've got access to your folders on the left-hand side, your music, your movies, um, your, your pictures, your desktop. And here you've got access to your folders and to your files. The next one here is around accessing your pictures, your music, your movies, your videos, all of that sort of stuff in your documents on your uh, Windows computer. Uh, you do this obviously within File Explorer. You've got access right in here. You've got your downloads, you've got your documents, you've got your pictures, including your camera roll, your save pictures. You've got your music and you've got some videos. On the Mac, I quite like this a lot better. Now again, very similar to Windows, you've got on your left hand side in the Finder, you've got access to your music, uh, your movies, your pictures in here as well. So you can create folders and put files into there. If you wanna go and change uh, what's in here, you can go into the Finder up here and select Preferences. And then under the sidebar button on the very top, you can actually untick these options and you'll see that they disappear from the actual finder itself. Okay, so we can just add these back in. Um, something that I love to do is uh, be able to use um, my pictures in a more meaningful way. Now, straight out of the box, your Mac um, has a uh, an application called Photos. You'll see that in my dock right here. Here it is, it's called Photos. And this is where I can access all of my photos and manage them in a really, really easy way. Music and movies, of course, movies, when you open up a movie, TV show, your home movies, you're also opening up a media player. In this case, the most, the most commonly used one is QuickTime, which is right here, and that is generally what is used. Uh, music, you're gonna open up the music app. So if you're familiar with iTunes, uh, well, iTunes has now been replaced by this music app there's also apps around TV. There's also apps around podcasts, all coming bundled by default on your Mac. So on my Windows computer, uh, the primary web browser that you've got is this one right here. All right, so this is Microsoft Edge. Uh, you also may have Microsoft Internet Explorer, which is another common one. And of course, uh, on Windows, you can install other browsers. You can install Google Chrome. You can also install Firefox on the Mac you've got Safari. So Safari in the bottom here in my dock, you can also access it by going into that applications area. Here it is right here, this is Safari. Uh, and this contains um, really the same sort of layout, the same sort of setup as what you will find on a Windows uh, uh, computer, Explorer and on Edge. Very similar to Windows on the Mac, you can also install Google Chrome and Firefox and others. Just go and search for those and you can download them and then you can install them. On your Windows computer, um, if you wanna open up applications, if you want to install applications, if you want to close and you want to uninstall applications, there's a specific process. That you've got your start menu, and this is commonly the place where you're gonna go and actually open up your apps. If you've got apps installed, here is where they're generally gonna be located. Let's look at our Mac. So our Mac, we wanna open up a uh, application as well. Let's say we open up the App Store, okay? Now the very first thing you'll see, you don't have it on the right hand side like you do on Windows. You don't have that cross on the right hand side. Instead, on the left hand side, you've got the cross right here, which is the little red icon. Everything is on the left hand side. Okay, on the Windows, it was on the other side. On Finder, you go into here and you can go into Applications and get it this way. Now, to actually install an application, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go the same way as you can on Windows, go to your browser, whatever browser you've got, and then say download Firefox for Mac, okay? So you can't install a Windows version of an application on a Mac. Now on the Mac, um, it's a .dmg file, which is a installer file for uh, Mac, while on the Windows, you've got a .exe file is commonly the way that you do it. The other way you can do it is through the App Store. This is built into your Mac. You can access it right here in the App Store and also through the applications area that we just showed you in the Finder and then you can go search for a particular thing right here. I can just type in Google, 
So you're gonna go and search for Google and you see that right here, it's found a whole bunch of apps, including Mail for Google. And then I click on Get and that will then download that uh, application onto my Mac. Now, to uninstall things, it's generally pretty easy. Generally, you have to go just into your Finder and Applications. There is no uninstaller available for this. So all I do is I grab it and I move it into my bin right down here. Here's my bin or my trash. I can also right click on it and I can say move to bin or move to trash. We did show you how to minimize and maximize a little bit or at least I've shown you me doing it. But how do you actually do it? Well, let's go and open up our windows here. Now on Windows, uh, we already know that we've got that cross on the right hand corner. You've also got this enlarge thing to make a item full screen or minimum screen on the, la on the right hand side. And then you've got this little minus to actually minimize it. On the Mac, here I've got this terminal window open to my Windows computer, but you'll see that these icons are now on the left. I've got the cross, which we just showed you, with the little minus. There it goes. And I can then reopen it up and also uh, make it larger, make it smaller by getting the corners of that application. This one is about swapping apps. So uh, on Windows, here we are on our Windows 10, uh, you can swap apps literally by just selecting down the very bottom. You know what apps are open because it's got this little line underneath it. And generally you would do a like a command tab or an alt tab and you can actually swap between your apps like so. On the Mac, command tab. So it's slightly different. There's actually a command key on your keyboard, Command Tab does this thing right here. Okay, so I can go and open up the App Store. Uh, I can also see on the my dock right here, I've got a little dot to let me know what applications are open. So I can just click on that application to actually open up that specific app. By default on your um, Windows 10 computer, you can do a right click command. All right, you can just click uh, on your mouse and do a right click and then you've got access to some further settings. Um, and that's pretty common because most mice that you use have a left click and a right click. If you're on a laptop, if you're on a MacBook, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, laptop, you've just got a big trackpad. What about the Apple mouse? You've just got one button. We open up what's called the system preferences right here where you access a whole bunch of settings. And there's an area right here called trackpad and mouse. Trackpad, we select this. Within trackpad, you've got an area right here called secondary click. A double click is grabbing two fingers and tapping, and that's how you do a right click on your Mac. On your mouse area, secondary click, click on the right side of your mouse. You can do a left click, clicking on the left, and you've got a right click, clicking on the other side, and it actually will feel uh, where you're physically touching that mouse, and it will simulate that right click. What about shortcuts? Um, and aliases. Uh, this is something that is same, but slightly different depending on whether you're on Windows or on a Mac. You can just right click on an actual thing right here, and then you can say create shortcut. On the Mac, um, it's the same thing. They're just not called shortcuts. It's called an alias. Right click on this uh, adesign.jpg file, right click on it, and instead of saying create shortcut, it says make alias. And there you go. There is the alias of this particular file. So you have also seen that there are some file extensions right here. If we open up our Windows box again, on Windows, you've got the more, the common ones, right? You've got movie files, you've got image sorts of files, you've got Word files, you've got PDFs. Now the great thing is all of those files can also be opened on the extensions are the same on a Mac computer. So that is absolutely brilliant and makes life very, very easy. So if you've got an image file on Windows, you can give it to a friend who's on a Mac, you can give it to yourself who's on a Mac now, and it'll open up. If you've got movie files, TV shows, you've got PDFs uh, on your old Windows computer and you've now moved over to a Mac, you can open all of those up on the Mac and that will work just fine, which is excellent. Now the main differences between the two will generally be the executable files. So these are the files that are used to install an application or to open up an application. So if you get yourself an exe file, and try to install it on a Mac, it will not work. On the Mac, you've got a .dmg file, which is the installer file. Generally, those files cannot be opened on Windows because they are Mac only. So to be able to change settings um, on your Windows computer, you're probably familiar with Control Panel. So we can click on the Start menu and type in uh, Control Panel. 
And this is the area where you have got access to customize, you get some further settings, some more administrative things. But on the Mac, it's called System Preferences. It's accessible right from here. You can go to it from the top left hand, the Apple logo and select System Preferences. And here you are presented with a whole bunch of settings and options that you have available on your Mac to be able to go and change and personalize your Mac the way that you want. On Windows to change your uh, screensaver, your background, you generally would right click on your desktop and you would select personalize right from here. And in here you've got access to your background. Okay, so you can go and select a new background that you see fit. You can just type in screensaver and there it is, change screensaver. And here of course you can set a relevant screensaver that you want on the Mac very similar, right clicking on the desktop and we can now select change desktop background. And this is actually the area where you do desktop and screensaver. So desktop, here are the folders. Apple themselves have given you a whole bunch of cool backgrounds and desktop um, backgrounds, wallpapers that you can actually apply. And you can also click on plus and navigate to a folder on your computer in the finder where you perhaps have some of your own images, some images that you've taken yourself with your camera. And then under the screensaver area is where you actually set your screensaver, okay? Again, there's a whole bunch of default screensavers that Apple have created, some are really, really cool. Um, start after, so how long do you wanna wait? Uh, you can show your clock on there, you can use a random screensaver, uh, and you've got also some screensaver options if you so choose to. If we're talking about searching for things, we just sort of did something before. Uh, we've got our personalized area. You can search for stuff right there. Down the very bottom, you can actually search for things right in here. So I could say my computer, and that'll open up this PC. Obviously within uh, Windows Explorer, within File Explorer, uh, you can do a quick access search on the very top right-hand corner. On the Mac, you've got uh, Spotlight. So on the very top right-hand corner, you've got this little magnifying glass right here, which I can just click on and then I can start searching for files. So I can type in AD design or ADDS, and it's already found that particular file right there. Okay, I could search for my app right here, and there it is, my app. It's also found applications uh, and the files, and it also does a bit of a web search as well. We wanna make sure that our operating system is kept up to date. It's very important to keep your operating system up to date because it does, it does fix bugs. Uh, security vulnerabilities that have been identified, you can just search for it, you can just type in update, and that will say check for updates. And then you've got a little overview here, it's gonna go and scan the internet and find relevant updates that are for Windows 10. On the Mac, you've got on the left-hand corner, again, we go into system preferences right in here. And under here, we're gonna look for the area called software update, which is right here. Very similar, it's gonna go out and search for updates. It'll then ask you to download it. You then download it and then you restart uh, your Mac at the end of that. Uh, that software updates, you've also got app updates that you'd all do through the App Store. So if you do have applications that you have uh, loaded onto your Mac, you can select updates once you open up that App Store and it'll show you apps that perhaps need updates and you update them through there. We've talked about all the software stuff, but now we're gonna look at the hardware specifically. One of the great things about the Mac is that Apple makes the hardware and Apple makes the software. Now, of course, inside of a Mac computer, there are lots of components, right? There, there is a CPU, there's RAM, there's hard drive, and all of those are specific brands. But those components have been selected and tweaked specifically for the Mac. The Mac have been put, the app Apple has put together the Mac, the look and feel, the hardware, the, the way that it functions, the, 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 the touch, the keyboard. They've also done the software, so you've got better compatibility. So you've got one company being Apple who look after the hardware and look after the software. On Windows, of course, it's slightly different. Uh, yes, Microsoft does have uh, a Microsoft tablet called a Surface, uh, but commonly, you're gonna go down to a PC store or be given a Dell, a HP, a Lenovo, uh, and these are not Microsoft. And then you're gonna be installing Microsoft Windows 10 onto that hardware. So sometimes you need to install drivers because you now need to get your Dell computer to be recognized, all of the hardware in that Dell computer to be recognized 
by Windows 10. But they're the main differences, right? You've got all these different manufacturers making laptops and desktops, and then they're running Windows software, while on the other side, you've got Apple who makes both the hardware and the software. So as I said at the start, I used to be a diehard Windows only person not liking the Mac because of the differences. I didn't know how to use it, but hopefully some of these tips uh, helped you out to sort of understand the differences, at least some basic differences between Windows and the Mac. But as always, uh, you need to go and play with it yourself. And as you start getting more familiar with it, as you're using it every day, you're doing your basic tasks, you're checking your emails, you're going onto the internet, you're perhaps watching a, a movie here or there on your computer, you'll start to get to know it, and then soon you'll be very, very comfortable to know how to use your Mac. But that's it, thank you. Do your thing by commenting, liking, and subscribing, clicking on that bell so that you keep up to date with everything that's going on. And you can also see some of my other videos right there if you wanna learn more about the Mac and any other stuff that's going on in my channel. Thank you again for spending the time. We'll see you next time.